What's up everybody? Today I'm going to share with you a beginner's guide to track day prep from mandatory items to items I recommend you bring uh, for your first or you know first few track events. So with that said, let's uh, let's start taking a look at what you could bring. First up, mandatory item. Got to bring a helmet. Uh, this particular example, this is uh, SA 2015 certified. Mm -hmm. I believe you need a minimum of SA 2010 safety rating. Uh, you can find that inside the helmet here, that little red band. I don't know if you guys can see it. There you go. Uh, I got this particular helmet off of Amazon. I believe it was 169 bucks. You know, it's not the worst, it's not the best. It does the trick, keeps me safe. This item is mandatory. They, yes, they typically they do rent helmets at the track, but with COVID-19 and all this bullshit, most of the helmet rentals aren't available. So if tracking something you plan to do on a semi-regular basis, I would just make the investment. That way you have it, you don't have to worry about it. And then also put a couple GoPro mounts on there. Um, <laughs> This one's in a kind of weird spot. I can show you guys a, a clip of it and kind of catch my eyebrow uh, <laughs> in the corner of the shot. But anyways, okay, first item up, mandatory helmet. Next item on the mandatory list, tow hook. Now, I have a 2016 F80 M3. Uh, for those of you who are rocking the same whip, this is located in the trunk in the emergency roadside area on the right hand side rear of the vehicle. So you mainly need one for the front of the vehicles recommended and for those of you who are rocking the F80, you have one in your clutches already. If not, I mean Turner Motorsport, Vima World, Mod Bargain, you name it. Everybody has one for sale. They're anywhere from 80 to uh, 150 bucks, depending on how crazy or how stylish, fancy you want to go. But next on the mandatory list, tow hook. Next up on the mandatory list to take to the track, torque wrench. I would recommend after every session, prior to every session, even if it's autocross or uh, you know a full-blown track day, tighten down your lug nuts each and every time. You know, for one, just to be safe, but for two, it's nice to have peace of mind that you know you're not gonna have some freak accident occur on the track. So, you know, go down to Harbor Freight, you know, wherever online. I got this a long time ago from Sears. Uh, it's probably overkill, but you know. It does the trick, keeps me safe. Okay, mandatory item, get yourself some race numbers. Um, I believe I got these from trackdecals.com. Uh, pretty good actually, you kind of choose your font and size. These are 10 inch. Now the whole magnet is not 10 inches. The actual numbers themselves are 10 inches, so be wary. If you're going to get something that's round, I believe they measure the entire decal, not the actual numbers. So um, I believe 10 inch is the standard for all series like SECA, any kind of track day event. I believe the minimum for just like a normal track day event, for example, I use, I go through Speed Ventures um, where I'm at. So they require at a minimum of 8 inch. So either get one of these magnetic ones, which is cool, throw them on um, both sides and one on the back or get yourself some, uh, just some like painter's tape, blue tape or white, whatever color, you know, throw it on your car on the windows. Uh, be careful on the back of the car. Uh, I did, I had to do it the first time because I didn't have numbers and it like, the adhesive and the tape like melted to my bumper and it was such a pain in the ass to get off. So um, again, it's mandatory to have numbers. You could use tape. Um, but if tracking is something you plan to do, even semi-regularly, just you know, a handful of events a year or whatever, I just recommend making an investment, getting you know, two or three of these magnetic decals, and you're good to go. Okay, so moving from the mandatory 
uh, track day prep list. Uh, here's, let's start in with the, uh, the optional stuff. So first on the list, brake pads. These ones are Carbotech XP10s. These are fucking fantastic. Um, thus far, they've been working great. I don't even think I've pushed them to their full limit yet, to be honest, and they're fantastic. Now, depending on how hard you're gonna go, you know, for your first session, yes, I said stock brake setup, fine. Yes, it'll probably be fine. Um, you may wear your pads out in one session. Like I said, it all depends on how hard you're gonna go. If it's your first time out and you're just gonna, you know, kind of feel out the track and take it easy, sure. Stock brake fluid and stock brake pads, brake setup will be fine. Um, I am trying to push my car harder and harder, especially like on road courses in the braking zone. So I went with the pads because I don't want to blow out my stock pads so I can drive them on the street. I can't really use the track ones on the street. They're very squeaky at low temperatures, but uh, first on the optional list, brake pads. Next on the optional list, to go with a uh, potential brake pad upgrade is upgrade your brake fluid. Multiple RBF 600. This is more than enough, um, reasonably priced. I, uh, this is, what is it, dot four racing brake fluid. Let's zoom in on it. There you go. Um, I flushed out all my stock fluid and I'm running the RBF 600. Again, if you're gonna try to push the vehicle, I'd recommend going with the DOT4 because you could um, boil your brake fluid, your stock fluid, if you're running it really hard, if the ambient temperature is hot, you know, there's multiple factors in there that could wear out your, your brakes. And of course, you want to have the comfort of knowing you're going to stop when you would like to stop and not run out of track. So um, I would consider this one optional, maybe mandatory for safety, but Certainly, um, maybe if not your first track session, but your second session and beyond, I'd highly recommend swapping brake fluid out. Okay, next on the optional list, uh, engine oil. Find out, go to the dealership. I get all my service done at the dealership, so I just looked at my spec sheet from my last oil change. I got the exact oil that goes in my vehicle or what's in there currently, but um, optional, it's nice to have just in case, you know, you're beating your cars on the track. It's nice to have um, some extra engine oil just in case. Next on the optional list, uh, tire pressure gauge. This is a digital gauge, if you guys can see it. Uh, it goes to the 10th PSI. I got this off of Amazon for 25 bucks. I bring a compressor with me as well. Uh, tire pressures are very important. I'm just getting into adjusting my pressures and things like that. Um, you know, if you have too much pressure in there, you could lose a lot of grip if you don't have enough pressure. You know, tires are very important. That's what connects us to the road. So optional, um, I felt it was mandatory because I want to know my tire pressures at all times when I'm coming off of a session and going onto a session. But get yourself a digital gauge or, you know, uh, a mechanical gauge, whichever, I highly recommend getting a tire pressure gauge. All right, next on the optional list, I have myself a long acre. You can see that there, zoom in. Barometer. What this does is when you come off a, when you come off a session, you can check the heat in your tires. So this coincides with making tire pressure adjustments, right? You're going to check, you know, the inside, the middle and the outside of the tire, right? You're going to get those three readings and you can make uh, tire pressure adjustments according. For example, if the middle of the tire is warmer than the outer edges, you have too much pressure. So you can make an adjustment, take a little air out. Conversely, if the outer edges have more heat than the center, you have too little pressure. So you can make adjustments that way. This is for sure optional. Um, I got this off of, I think I got this off of Amazon. It was uh, 125 bucks, I think. It's been cool. Like I said, I'm, I'm just beginning. You know, I've had, I think I have eight sessions under my belt. So I'm just playing around with 
checking all the stuff out, making adjustments, trying to stay safe, trying to get faster and more comfortable on the track. So parameters are cool, uh, certainly optional. Okay, next up on the optional list, I have the uh, magnetic hammer gauge from Schwaben. So I'm running the Turner camber plates on the front of my vehicle. Uh, I believe right now I have it set to three degrees of camber. This is, you know, not super accurate because it's not digital. It's, it's magnetic. It's kind of like a, you know, a level, right? It's pretty simple, but it gets me within the ballpark that I need. So, you know, checking this out, if something feels a little off. I can just pop this right there on the, uh, on the rotor, get a reading, make sure I'm, I'm within my specs. So again, this is way optional, especially if you're not running camera place, there's no need for it. This was cheap. I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks off of uh, Turner Motorsport. So it's helping me out to keep me within the range that I need. So camera gauge, most certainly optional, nice to have. All right, next on the optional list, uh, a jack. I have a couple. I typically travel with this smaller one. Uh, it's lighter, it's easy to carry around. Most times I don't have a trailer, so I, uh, I drive my car to the track. So I'll drive it on my street tires and then I will flip to my track tires when I get there. So I bring a jack. I also have this behemoth. Uh, depends what you're gonna do at the track. Like if you're gonna, you know, get it up and change your uh, your brake pads out when you're there or you need to do some other work on it perhaps it's better to have a larger jack get you higher up in the air get you more access to your vehicle typically i just bring this little guy here i try to pack um, as consolidated as possible for um, space reasons but um, like i said it all depends on what you're doing when you get to the track right so um, jack is nice to have certainly optional Next on the optional list, this one's kind of quasi-optional, mandatory, chair. A lot of times, there's nowhere to sit but inside your driver's seat. So most track days, you're running, um, you know, you run your 20, 30 minute session, and then you're waiting for an hour, possibly two hours for your next heat. So I recommend bringing a chair so you're comfortable. Last optional item, again, is uh, Easy Up 10. This is a 10 by 10. I uh, got it from Target online. It was like 75 bucks. If you shop around a little bit, you can find a deal on them. Um, again, I live in Southern Cal. It's hot out here in the summertime. So going to the track, a lot of times you can't reserve a garage stall each and every time. So a nice backup plan to keep yourself uh, cool, comfortable, again, while you're kind of waiting from session to session at the track, I recommend get yourself a little pop-up tent. And if you're gonna get a tent, get yourself some weights for all four corners. Uh, you'd hate to have your tent blow away or blow into someone else's car or your own car or whatever. So um, again, optional, recommended. Last optional item, get yourself a set of our compound racing tires. Uh, again, I drive my car to the track. I do not have a trailer at the moment, so I drive with my street tires to the track and I swap to these fucking things. These are the Nito uh, NTO ones, uh, 18 inch. These are the TA5Rs from Beamer World. They're awesome. I can put the link in, uh, in the details for you guys, but again, way optional but uh, recommended get some uh, track dedicated tires for you so you don't have to uh, worry about blowing out your street tires and having to drive your car home with, with no tread or you know you're gonna break the bank account you know save up and invest keep your eye out for a special and um, get yourself some some track dedicated tires thanks for watching don't forget to hit like and subscribe